Okay, so we've started the recording and I think we can get started with today's career session. So welcome everyone. I hope everyone had a really amazing day so far and I hope everything is going well with, um, with the training. So for today's career session, we're going to look at the different tools that um, teams use for project management. Um, so just to start us off, I know some of us here are project managers in different um, work areas. Some of us are product managers. Some just work in teams. And I'd like to just know um, what kind of um, tools you use on a day-to-day -day basis just to ensure the collaboration between the team. I know different companies can tend to use different tools. Anyone? <clears throat> yes, Terefe. Sorry, sorry. Can you repeat once again the question? Uh, yes, so I wanted to ask, um, this is just an open space, if we can just share, um, if you're already working in a team, if you're a project manager, product manager, um, I, I would just like to know, since there are very many different tools that people leverage for different companies to do project management, I'd just love to know which ones you guys have experience using, um, yeah. Which ones do you use in your teams just to ensure um, smooth collaboration and learning for work? Yeah, thank you for uh, your question. Mm -hmm. uh, from my uh, experience, actually, I have an exposure to manage one project for six months. It mm -hmm. was uh, it was a replacement for the maternity leave of the former project manager so uh, while i was uh, managing the project actually we were using the the project cycle management method like uh, you know there is a output table and the project uh, has five outputs and uh, for each output there are activities so based on the activities uh, to be implemented in the in the, in the field uh, there is, you know, not only the managing the overall project activities, but also there is a close uh, work relation with supportive staffs. Of course, there are line staffs for the specific to the project, but there are supportive uh, staffs like uh, logistics, finance, uh, procurement, and so on. So uh, I was, you know, closely working with these units to uh, effective. I mean, to bring the effective implementation of the project activities. You know, that was uh, the way how I was trying to manage the project. Thank you. Okay. Um, thanks, Terefe. That's a good um, description of a project that you worked on. Um, so maybe just a follow-up question. Um, is there any kind of tool? It could be a document that you kind of used to manage or just put all this data about the project could be a documentation of the project, uh, looking at the logistics and finances. Which softwares or which tools did you use to keep all of this? Yeah, actually, uh, it, the project was from the organization. I yeah. was I was the employee of uh, the organization, and we were using uh, different tools for different purposes. Yeah. Uh, for example, we were using the Navi and Elo tools, which are the digital tools for uh, financial follow up of the financial budgets. And also mm -hmm. there is a procurement uh, tool to manage the flow of the purchase and the supply of the materials. Mm -hmm. And also there is a unique tool to uh, follow up and monitor the overall activity of uh, the specific to the project, uh, particularly uh, together with the monitoring and evaluation unit, we were uh, preparing this unique tool, which is a digital tool still. Uh, it has a criteria to follow up the activities specific to the project in the field. 
So yeah, of course, these are the tools based on their specific criteria we were using. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. I've also heard some tools that I haven't used before, but it's interesting to just um, hear your view. Um, does anyone else want to share any kind of project management tools they've used so far for collaborations with different projects? Let's get someone else's view. Okay. Um, so since no one um, else has volunteered, we can just go ahead with the session. So today we're going to look at the different remote work tools that can help us to streamline activities in a project. So you all know that when managing projects, you need to have a proper, a clear communication channel for everyone. You need to have spaces where teams can collaborate. And this is if your team is working remotely and you're going to, so this is specifically for remote work. Um, so yeah, how do you collaborate between different people's, uh, between different, uh, yeah, so if people are not in the same physical space, how do you all collaborate to ensure that the project becomes a success? So in terms of communication, collaboration, um, just keeping tabs of the different um, workflows and activities in the project. So before we go on, I'd just like to, um, let's maybe just explore what uh, we first mean by remote work. Um, I know you're all familiar with this, but does anyone want to give their view about this? Okay, um, okay, so basically remote work, I think I hear someone. Am I right to think that a project is short term? Yes, a project can be short term. It can take even from a week to six months to years. Uh, a project is a project as long as it has uh, deliverables, timeline, objectives and goals and everything. Um, would you like to share Kahuma? Okay, so maybe he's still typing, but I think it would be interesting if we get to hear different projects that people have worked on and how you manage that. But while we wait, we can just go on with the session. So basically remote work is what we're doing right now. Um, it's basically, it could be a work arrangement where employees perform their tasks and responsibilities from a location that's not uh, the traditional office and it's norm it normally uses technology to connect and collaborate so making sure you're all connected on the internet you have a laptop or a phone and you have also this project management tools that you work with to ensure that the project is streamlined so the reason why we were insisting on remote work is because over the years since COVID, it has um, taken a rise. People have started um, adopting the remote work culture, but at the same time, uh, some are also adopting the hybrid models. And um, so, yeah, remote, hybrid, or physical, um, it depends on the company. And we've seen that nowadays, people are also trying to get back into the office more. But um, so if we were in a remote setting, how exactly would you ensure that you manage a project successfully? Um, the reason why people choose to work remotely is because uh, if you want to improve the work-life balance and avoid maybe a lot of commute to and fro, um, and if you also want to harness a global talent pool, uh, you've seen, if you've if you've been following some of the media, you've seen that some of the big US companies are trying to um, get some talents from maybe countries like India because they tend to become, they tend to save more money for the company. Um, and there's also, 
they also there's also that inclusivity in terms of um, diversity and all and yeah so that those are some of the reasons that people choose to uh, work remotely and so for this for this session specifically we're going to see um, if you're given a project to manage and it you how how exactly what tools are you going to use to ensure that um, everything is streamlined so the main thing the four categories that make remote work efficient is number one communication is key and i think we talked about it during the first week on the importance of communication and then how also do you collaborate with your teams how do teams from different parts of the world um, collaborate and also how do we manage the project to ensure that we are aware where the project is currently the things to do and also what has been done and also just refining the project in itself and all the aspects of project management and also in terms of time management uh, that's also another key uh, thing that uh, in highly influences if a remote project is successful or not and this should also consider things like um, the different time zones that uh, the different teams are so uh, that should also be a key so these are the four main building blocks of your digital workspace so if we quickly just look into the different examples that we have for remote tools if we look at the different communication uh tools so slack is is we, we we're all using slack currently yes uh at an academy here and i believe you've all had like you've all experienced how slack can be especially if you're thinking about managing a really big um community and you want to ensure that uh, communication is really streamlined in um, everyone gets to understand um, what's happening and maybe a place to broadcast everything. And if you're also considering like having a lot of employees in one place. Um, so it's, it, Slack has adopted this new term, which is called, um, it's like a digital, uh, is it digital workspace? Um, yeah, no, digital headquarters, sorry. So, um, and it basically just means um, an office, but digitally. So it's mostly used for communication. It allows team to collab teams to collaborate in real time. And it has like different features, for example, um, the direct messages or channels. So direct messages are meant to, if you're trying to communicate to one specific person or maybe three people in one direct message. So you use the direct messages feature. And then it also has channels. And this could be for specific topics or for specific teams. For example, um, we have the women only channel we also have the channel for maybe, I don't know if you've seen the all resources or all music or maybe all week four, all week one. Um, so depending on your organization and your needs, um, you need to set these different channels and you can also, you also have a chance to add specific people into that specific um, channel. So for channel, it, it can also be, um, private or not private so regarding on who do you want to access this information from slack uh, so there's also that setting and it also offers things like voice and video calls uh, also file sh files sharing so it's a really great tool for project management um, because it actually centralizes all the discussions and also decision making and also just sharing information across the different teams. Um, there are, like we mentioned earlier, there are very many different tools for project management. And I'm sure most of you have used different ones, but for this tutorial, we're just going to look at, um, we're just going to look at these examples that we've provided here. Um, so in terms of also collaboration, 
we are looking at things like Google Workspace or Notion. So I think you've also used Notion a bit, uh, especially when checking um, schedules. Um, but if if I know some of you have also used it to maybe build your own website or also um, just get uh, maybe if you've already used it in your organization to probably just uh, manage the different projects. Um, it, it's also a really good to it has more features than just the scheduling of the timetable. Um, so it has so you can do things like writing notes or reports um project management uh, it and you can also collaborate with different people from your team so one of the things we're going to be needing you to do this week is to create like um your your own notion page and then you'll have to invite the different people using the different emails who can access that notion page and in that notion page you'll have different things so for example um you can maybe classify different reports in one in one page and then you can also do things like budgeting it could also be written down in that page and you can also add things like images um it's a really great tool so it's just uh, and you can also add a lot of teams uh using email to collaborate and maybe organize work efficiently um so you can also use it to store and manage uh just different project uh, related information and yeah so that's on collaboration so if we're looking at uh, the other tool which is google workspace um i think it normally used to be called g suite um so it's it's one of the really also one of the really great tools because it has um number one it's cloud-based so that's also becoming a really important feature in project management so um the one of the reasons is uh, you don't get to store much data you get to free up some space on your laptop a lot of people from different areas can also access that information on cloud uh, so if your laptop crashes or anything your data will still be safely backed up on cloud um yeah and it also has like a lot of productivity apps so if you look at google workspace you'll notice so something like gmail it has calendar it has um video there's it has a lot of things um documents creating slides um i don't know if a, some of you have already started using this for your exercises but i think it's uh, it's, it's a really great tool also for managing projects and yeah just storing information uh yeah so and the good thing is um it also offers that collaborativeness so you can choose who gets access to a different document and whatnot um the other thing the other tool in this is specifically for project management um i don't know how many of you have used trello before um so trello is also one of the one of a really good project management tools um but this this one uses the concepts of i don't know if you've heard of the kanban boards uh so basically kanban uh, the kanban boards are those like the lists that you make. So if maybe if you are uh, some old school people would use stickers and then they would write to do in progress and also um, completed. So that's the basic um, workflow for Trello. So it uses the concept of boards or lists or even cards. So uh, so if your members of the team can use it to create boards for different projects and in those boards you can share like different ideas about that project and um, you can also make things like workflows and also create tasks for a specific person in that team and everyone from the team can also be able to come and have a look and look at what's 
um, what the project progress and the details. Um, so the things like cards can contain things like maybe descriptions of a specific project. It could contain maybe things like attachments. It could be photos that you took of a certain project. Um, or even reports or documents. And it also has things like due dates and one can leave comments if it's reviewed by your senior and things like that. Um, another thing is, yeah, so it, it just basically makes it easy for you to, to track the progress of your, um, of your project. And uh, yeah, it's really good to keep everyone updated. So instead of, one person instead of information getting lost in um, in a lot of messages. So I finished this task, I finished this task. Um, and you don't need to tell like really everyone from that department or on Slack, I finished this thing. If you can just update it on Trello, every person who is involved in the project can be able to really see um, how the project is going, uh, what's, what's done, what's not done. Um, yeah things like that. So it's a really good project management tool. And it's, yeah, and the good, the one thing I love about Trello is it's a very visual thing. So um, if you're one of the, yeah, so it's visual in terms of the boards and the workflows. And it's also really good for prioritizing tasks as well. And we went through, uh, prioritization in week two, I think. And you also learned how important prioritization of task is. So yeah, so if you're looking at prioritizing tasks for a certain team, um, Trello would be good um, for this exercise. Um, another thing that is very key for project management is time management. And it's also one of the things that we looked at. Um, so, and yeah, I think if you remember week, week zero, week one, we talked about time management and we did an exercise on creating uh, different schedules on Google Calendar. So you, I think some of you got to maybe schedule and organize tasks and events on Google Calendar, and you also got to invite certain members from your team. Uh, but this can also be used to create um, a calendar for the different employees in a certain, or just team members in a certain project. So let's say you're trying to find a, a, a right time for you to have a meeting with a certain employee in, or a certain teammate in a project. So if your organization is, um, if your organization is, um, has, planned. Um, so if everyone from the team has planned uh, all this in a schedule and you can get to see um, everyone's time schedule, it's easy for you to see what time this person is free and which time uh, this person is not free. So yeah, um, it's, yeah, it, I think it's, yeah, I think it's a really, it's also a really great tool for in terms of time management and yeah so that's i think the basic just like four or five tools that we've talked about here for project management again like i mentioned there are so many so many project management tools but these are just some of the main tools that we think um are important for um, building your digital workspace and just making sure things are up to up to task. Um, so, yeah, just maybe to talk about the future of remote work. Um, so, it the remote work is really flexible, and some of you here might end up um, doing projects uh, remotely with uh, different teams. And we hope that these tools that we've mentioned here will be able to um, help you get started on the project and seamlessly. So um, I think it will also be a good thing if you're hired to manage a certain project and they see that you have a good way of organizing all information and you're like, um, 
uh, what, what's the what's the name to say? Um, you're well organized, and you've organized your team well, such that everything is seamless. So if you just use maybe three or four of these tools, um, I think you'll be good. Um, yeah. So I just love to maybe get before we go into the exercise. That was really it for the tools for remote work. Before we get into what you'll be doing for this week's exercise, I'd just love to get a view of um, what you guys think about um, the remote work's impact on traditional office setups. So yeah, I know some of you prefer a hybrid environment, some of you prefer physical environment. Um, what do you guys think about remote work? If I may ask. Or this is also a chance to share what kind of remote tools you use for your organization or your project. Anyone? Yes, Edwin. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Margaret. I'll begin with uh, the first question on the future of uh, of remote work. Well, uh, there is a point you made while making your presentation on uh, the work life balance. Eh? Mm -hmm. We realize <laughs> we spend a lot of time in uh, commute from work to work. Jam is crazy. So if you know that uh, you have to work your eight hours instead of waking up at five to beat traffic so that you reach work at eight, uh, you're saved from that hustle and you can wake up at 6.37 and by 7.30 you begin working, meaning you'll even be able to, to give your work some extra time uh, where needed. And uh, yeah, it also helps you spend more time with your family. You may not be engaging with them but uh, you have the liberty of being around seeing you. So that is uh, the advantage of uh, remote work. However, if it finds you <laughs> lazy, you know, when you're being watched at times you work, so if you're not uh, self-motivated, it could also be on the other negative side. Yeah, part of uh, the tools I have worked with, I have majorly worked with uh, Microsoft Teams or collaboration that is a uh, communication meetings it has a, a feature of a calendar and also document uh, document uh, repository because you can store each and every document there and any member of the team part of that channel can be able to access it remotely then one that has helped on the part of uh, procurement stroke finance is uh, oracle where uh, one can put in a purchase order or a move order, and the responsible parties will, or approvers will go through the system to make the approvals until it reaches the final level. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Edwin. Those were some really great insights. And um, I think one of the other things that people, that guys can debate on is also on, so regarding remote work, um, things like missing the physical, um, the physical, like the one-on-ones with your teammates and having that um, collaboration. But again, everything has its own pros and cons, but just in case you get a project that you need to manage uh, remotely, we hope that you'll be ready to tackle it. Um, thanks. So Kahuma says, I think I think it's a very unique and smart, though it's a new thing mostly in Africa. Would you please tell me more about workspace, how effective they are, and any recommendations? Um, so do you mean Google Workspace or? Uh, what kind of what workspace are you referring to? Mm 
Okay. Um, so for Google Workspace, I think um, it's it's I think it's a lot of the things that we use. Um, if you mostly use, so if I think number one, you need to have a Gmail account, which I think everyone has. And then it also has, like the whole workspace in itself has different features. So from the Gmail, so that's email communication. And then there's also the drive that helps you store and manage a lot of data. And this could range from videos, audio, um, documents, reports, slides, everything. And with also that, so it comes with also Google Docs, um, Google Sheets, Google Slides, all of them in a G Suite. So you can be able to use all these features and also things like Google Calendar, Google Chat, you can also use that for um, communication, Google Meet, the one we're currently on. Um, and also, uh, you can also create forms. Uh, if you want, you can whip up a small website for yourself on Google Sites, and it can take less than 30 minutes. And yeah, that's that's basically Google Workspace. It gives you that whole, um, it gives you a lot of features that you can, um, that you can leverage to communicate and manage projects and yeah, share information, collaboration, all those things. And yeah, it's it's very effective. And I think one of the major perks is um, it's mostly free if you don't use a lot of um, maybe data. Um, that's also another thing that one can consider. So depending on the budget that you have, some tools are not, some tools don't come free. Um, I think Google Workspace is uh, really great for that. Uh, one of the things that I don't see on Google Workspace, correct me, but um, yeah, maybe things like project management tools exactly. Like if you want to, um, if you want to like manage the different um, the different projects that you have, streamline everyone. You can maybe draw the, some of those things on on Google Docs, but some tools are much easier to use, like Notion. Uh, so using all of them together collaboratively is good. Thanks, Kahuma. So for this week, we are just going to um, get started on, um, so how, how do we, uh, so if you're a project manager, you need to get all these things, for, you need to like start all these things from scratch. So Slack, you need to create a whole workspace from scratch. And if you're talking about Notion, you need to create your own page uh, from scratch also, and also invite and collaborate people and collaborate with different people. So this week's task will be, it will be just, um, yeah, it will be just testing you on that. So you'll get to create, um, you'll get to create maybe uh, the Notion, Slack, Workspace, and Trello. Um, so from scratch for your team. And the purpose for this uh, tutorial is to just get you started on, um, how do I get started on creating a workspace? How do I create a motion page? Um, things like that. And also if your organization already has all this um, set up, how do you onboard a new hire into the team and get them up to speed with everything? Um, so from the exercise, you'll just see that there's a little bit of background um, and yeah, just a small explanation and links to um, some of the tools that we use. Um, so you'll be, you'll mostly work on Google Calendar, uh, Notion, Slack and Trello. And basically the task is just to uh, onboard a new team member using this new tools and on top of onboarding creating all this workspaces from scratch so just go through the document if you have any question uh, so mostly what you'll be required to submit is just screenshots of what you'll create and maybe a report on how to do some like a step step by step of how to do some 
yeah, on how to work these things out. Um, yeah, that's basically it. And then you have the mapping rubric here. So um, for Google Calendar, setting it up. So it has Slack, Notion, and also task two, three, and four. You have what you need to do written on the mapping rubric. Um, so I think that's that's mostly everything, unless anyone has a question regarding this tutorial today. Any comment? All right. So no comment. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, um, sorry, I have uh, just a comment. Okay, yes, go ahead. Thank you. Somebody mentioned uh, uh, Oracle. I don't know if it's here. We can just uh, throw some little light on on the use of uh, Oracle for for collaboration. Okay, I think that's a question for Edwin. Would you like to take it? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Colin, the, the the use of Oracle uh, in my previous role, I'll, uh, I'll give how I was doing that. Uh, I was a project supporting project coordinators. <clears throat> and for the various projects we were handling, we had to, to raise a purchase order. So that purchase order would be raised from the project site uh, that is attaching the different documents, the BOQ, the, the CAPEX form, the, the um, BOQ, CAPEX form, and uh, the, the site details uh, for the sites we're going to be working on. So after the coordinator raises that purchase order, okay, it's a purchase requisition in the beginning, then it would go through the chains to the line manager. From the line manager, it would go to the heads of department, meaning at that point it would leave the project side. Then it would go to the supply chain to ensure that all the supporting documents uh, are attached. Then from supply chain, it would go to the finance side, the CFO, to, to approve it so that uh, the vendor gets uh, their purchase order that is approving them to begin work. Yeah, the confirmation that they pay for this is there and they can begin work. I don't know if uh, that uh, answers your question, Mr. Colin. Uh, yeah, uh, Edwin, uh, thank you. I, I just said uh, this particular tool, uh, that means mm. the platform, the platform will have to bring in this persons you're talking about from the company, including the vendor. So they will all be in this uh, platform. And then uh, secondly, what's the ex uh, name of these two? Is it Oracle or just uh, so that I can check it out? Oh, okay, the vendor the vendor doesn't need to be part of the workflow. He His email, the person supposed to be receiving the purchase order should be the one in the workflow. Like that email should be added on the supply chain side. But then the workflow is for the people within the organization in that I don't have to follow up with emails. Eh? All the documents are within the workflow and the different approvers can check the documents or the, the system for the different things they have to approve you know, on their side from the various departments. Yeah. Oh, okay, thank you very much, Edwin. Please, what was the name of these two? It's uh, Oracle. Who are using Oracle? Oracle EBS. It has a. Uh, it had the functionality of uh, tracking inventory or raising inventory, move orders, then um, uh, purchase orders. Yeah, mainly it was to do with things that have some finances eh, involved or stock. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm grateful. Yeah. We shall be able to share within Slack. Okay, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, thanks, Edwin and Collins. I think that's a really good way to share our experiences and in that we learn. 
uh, from each other. So it's really commendable. And I think from your discussion, it also uh, reminded me of a different software, an ERP software. I think some of you guys have used that in your organization. So basically just uh, manages all the resources in a company. Um, yeah, so like I said, every company chooses different ways to manage um, their projects and their resources. Um, so yeah, it would be great if we could all share and just get to know the pros and cons of all of them. Uh, but yeah, if anything comes up, feel free to share it on Slack on all week four. It would be really nice to hear more from you. Um, yeah, so also Kahuma has asked, how can I use this for entrepreneurship? That's a really good question. Um, uh, also, so if you're using it for entrepreneurship, I think that would also depend on um, the amount of resources that you have in your organization. So there's no need for you to create a whole Slack channel when you have only like two people in your organization or three. Um, there are other communication channels you can use like WhatsApp or anything. But if you're, it de again, it depends with the amount of resources you have. So the human resource, uh, finance, stock, and all of those things. Um, but yeah, just, yeah, so, for entrepreneurship, I think if you if you take a look at something like um, Notion, it can help you create things like document. Or if you look at so if you're maybe taking stocks or things, yeah, you can either use um, Notion or you can use the very common Google Sheets and yeah, things like that. But again, it depends on uh, the structure of your business. Let me see. Unless someone has something to add on that, maybe someone here is an entrepreneur and they've, and they've used um, different tools. Anyone can add on that? All right. Um, so yeah, if there's no more comments or questions, I think we'll end the session here. Thank you so much again for being here. It was lovely. Maybe, uh, Margaret? Yes. Uh, I have one more question regarding the accessibility of this document because uh, I think it's better to share with us as of this document so that we can proceed with the, the challenge. Otherwise, we may uh, just take a time to, to wait for this document. So if you can share it, as soon as possible, I think it's better. Okay, um, I hear you. So initially we used to send them to email, but we noticed um, some emails get lost. Um, we miss some emails. Uh, so we I shared it on the Slack channel on group all week four, but I'm going to reshare it again there. Um, yeah, I'm going to reshare it again. Um, yeah, so if you check on all week four, I've also posted it there. And I hope it's the access, I think, is open for everyone. So, Tarifa, can you just give me a thumbs up if you've, if you've got an access to it? Yeah, I'm yes. looking for the slugs. Okay, okay. Yes, me too. Okay, thanks. Uh, all right, so let's have an amazing evening, everyone, and um, all the best with your training. Bye.